Apple's iPhone event just finished and they finally revealed their brand new iPhone 13 lineup. So in this video, I'm gonna go through all of the new features and benefits of the Pro models specifically compared to the previous iPhone 12 Pro models to help you decide if you should actually make the upgrade. And this year, there is a massive change compared to what Apple did with last year's Pro models, but before I get into helping you decide if you should upgrade or not, let's go over all the new features and specs of Apple's brand new iPhone 13 Pro. First off, I want to mention that both models come in the same sizes as before, with 6.1 and 6.7 inch displays. They also both get the same ceramic shield front glass as before, the same overall design with the stainless steel chassis, the same 128 gigs of base storage, the same display resolution, the same IP68 water resistance, the same selfie camera hardware, and the same charging speeds, including 15 watt MagSafe. But now getting into the differences, the most obvious difference is the smaller notch, which definitely looks better than before. And it's due in part to Apple moving this speaker grill to the top of the device. And interestingly, the selfie camera is now on the left side instead of on the right. On the back of the iPhone 13 Pro models, the camera bump is now massive compared to last year. And I'll explain why when I get into the camera camera section, but I want to quickly ask you guys to click that subscribe button and check out our new merch like our M1X chip shirt down in our merch shelf below this video. The iPhone 13 Pro models now also get a new Sierra blue color instead of Pacific blue, which I honestly am not a fan of with the rest of the color options staying unchanged. This year, the iPhone 13 Pro is surprisingly quite a bit heavier, 204 grams instead of 189 on the 12 Pro. And the new 13 Pro Max is 240 grams instead of 228, so they're definitely heavier this year. They're also a bit thicker, 7.65 millimeters instead of the previous 7.4 millimeters on the 12 Pro models. But the absolute biggest change this year is the new ProMotion technology, which allows the display to refresh at up to 120 hertz. And the best part about it is that it works automatically and it dynamically adjusts between 10 hertz and 120, depending on the content that you're viewing. But the very unique feature is that it adapts in real time. So if you're swiping through photos, it'll speed up to a higher refresh rate and then slow back down to 10 hertz if you're looking at a still image for just a split second. This by itself will greatly help save battery life on the new iPhones, and it's why the 13 Pro gets 1.5 hours more battery life than the 12 Pro, and the new Max model gets 2.5 hours more than the 12 Pro Max. However, I do want to highlight a very interesting tidbit, and that's the fact that if you look at Apple's rating for the streamed video playback battery life, which includes watching YouTube videos, the 13 Pro gets up to 20 hours instead of just 11 on the 12 Pro and the 13 Pro Max gets up to 25 hours instead of 12 on the 12 Pro Max, which is gonna be a huge deal for those who watch a lot of videos. Another cool difference is that the 13 Pro models have a brighter display that can go up to 1000 nits in any situation instead of the previous 800 on the 12 Pro models. And of course, the iPhone 13 Pro now gets the new A15 Bionic chip with a few improvements that I wanna discuss. Even though the CPU core layout is the same with two high performance cores and four efficiency cores, the overall transistor count is going up to an almost 15 billion compared to 11.8 billion on the A14. But the biggest change this year is that the GPU on the 13 Pro now gets five cores instead of four on the A14, which should lead to a pretty huge difference in graphics performance. And if you're interested in seeing just how big of a difference there is, we're gonna be doing a direct comparison between the two, so definitely subscribe if you haven't already. Now moving on, the 16 core neural engine can now run 15.8 trillion operations per second compared to just 11 on the A14. And there are even more upgrades like a new display engine that will be more efficient, new video encoders and decoders, which will help with video editing and video streaming, 
double the system cache, which will improve overall performance, and a new image signal processor that improves the overall camera quality. On top of that, Apple also mentioned that it has wider lossy compression support, which basically helps make your photos, videos, and audio files use less storage space than before. Now before I get into the massive camera differences, I want to list off a couple of other upgrades compared to last year. First up, the iPhone 13 now supports dual eSIM, which means that you can have two cell phone lines without using a physical SIM card at all. Apple also mentioned that it now supports more 5G bands, which likely points to a new Qualcomm X60 modem that was previously rumored, which will also improve battery life due to better efficiency. And if you really want to, you can now finally get a one terabyte storage model if you're willing to pay the crazy expensive price. And now with all of that out of the way, let's get right into the camera changes. And this is where it gets crazy because unlike last year, the cameras on both the 13 Pro and the Pro Max are literally identical. In fact, the only differences between the two are literally the display size, the display resolution, and the battery life. That's it. So with that said, both iPhone 13 Pro models now get a new 3x optical zoom telephoto lens, compared to a 2.5x zoom on the 12 Pro Max and just a 2x zoom on the 12 Pro. So zoom shots are going to be much improved on the new Pro models. The only downside is that because of the new 3x optical zoom, the lens aperture is now f2.8 instead of as fast as f2.0 on the 12 Pro model, which means that the lens takes in literally 50% less light, which is going to add more noise to your photos. And if you want to see just how big of a difference that's going to make, we're going to be comparing the cameras on the 13 Pro, the 12 Pro, and the 11 Pro very soon. Now to combat the slower f2.8 lens, Apple is now allowing night mode to work directly on the telephoto lens, which is a very good sign. Now getting into the main wide camera, this is getting a pretty massive improvement with a new larger sensor with much larger 1.9 micron pixels compared to 1.4 on the 12 Pro and 1.7 on the 12 Pro Max. And in combination with a faster f1.5 aperture lens, there is now a 2.2x improvement in low light when compared to the 12 Pro. So this is gonna help reduce as much noise as possible for super clean photos, as well as helping to make night mode shots take less time than before, probably just one second or less. But the camera I'm most excited for is the new ultra wide camera because it's getting a major improvement with a new f1.8 aperture lens, which almost doubles the amount of light that goes into the sensor. And because of that, Apple had to give it a new six element lens to enable autofocus because the faster aperture makes the depth of field tighter. And this also helps the lens focus super close, as close as two centimeters away from a subject to enable the new macro photography feature, which is gonna be incredibly useful for creative photos. And on top of that, Apple is updating the 13 lineup to support Smart HDR4, which should give us another improvement in terms of dynamic range. Apple is also adding the new photographic styles feature, which basically adds a smart filter that can do things like add more contrast to photos or make them more bright and vibrant. But the really awesome detail is that you can adjust the tone and the warmth to exactly how you like it, and those custom settings will stick basically forever without having to adjust them every time. So for example, if you think iPhone photos are too warm, you can turn down the warmth and voila, you get more cool tone photos. And now to finish off with the craziest new feature coming to the iPhone 13 lineup, we have the new cinematic video recording mode. This feature is gonna be revolutionary and automatically blur the background as you're recording a subject. And while it's doing that, it can detect multiple faces in the frame. So if your subject turns away, it'll automatically rack focus on the face in the background 
and then focus back to the subject again. Or you can simply tap on a face to make it adjust focus, and then tap again to make it track the face as it moves closer or further away. But the absolute mind-blowing feature is that all of the depth data is saved on your phone, so you can go into the video and adjust the aperture or background blur in post. And even crazier, you can actually change the focus point as you're editing the clip in post if you accidentally messed it up while shooting. And for all of you filmmakers out there, later this fall, you'll be able to record in the ProRes video format thanks to the new ProRes hardware accelerators built into the A15 chip. And there you guys go, those are all the major differences between the iPhone 13 Pro and the 12 Pro. So let's finally answer the original question. Should you upgrade if you already own the 12 Pro? Well, if you're perfectly happy with your iPhone, including how much battery life you're getting, and you don't mind the larger notch, and you're perfectly happy with the camera quality, then I'd honestly say that you should just stick to the 12 Pro. But if you've been waiting for 120Hz refresh rate for years, I think you should upgrade because it makes the entire phone feel so much more smooth and snappy than before. Or if you would really love the extra battery life, especially the extra 2.5 hours on the 13 Pro Max, or maybe the over double video streaming hours, then it might actually be worth it for you. Or if you wanna have the absolute best camera quality you can get in any iPhone, then I would definitely upgrade. Those three features alone are why I'm personally upgrading to the iPhone 13 Pro Max, especially since I absolutely love the new look of the massive camera bump on the back, as well as the updated smaller notch on the front. But if those three features don't really matter that much to you, then I would honestly just wait it out for the iPhone 14 Pro because that model might be getting a full redesign. So hopefully this video helps you make a decision. And if it did, go ahead and click the subscribe button above and definitely check out our new merch down in the merch shelf below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.